welcome to Friday Night Bible Study! <laughs> happy Spring Shower! I thought you were going to say Easter! Oh, oh Happy okay. Christmas! <laughs> happy Spring Showers! It's yes. a beautiful rainy day here. It's nice. Kelly said, you know, I like rainy days too. I do, I do, I do. I, like I do too. Okay, I'll tell you a quick story. When we were kids, if there was a thunderstorm, Kelly would get all of us kids, and she'd be like, let's go on the back porch with a blanket. And then we'd sit in the back porch and watch the thunderstorm. And if it was thunder, we'd go under a blanket. Then we'd come out. Then we'd go. It's That's so fun. Kelly. <clears throat> so anyway, we have going on this week. We have, well, it is Friday. So Sunday, we have 11 a.m. church, 30 a.m. continental breakfast. And it's delicious homemade goods. Or store-bought goodies. I don't know. It's just good. And then we have Kids Church. Also, we have a church bus. We would love to pick up your kids. And if you're in Fergus Falls and you don't drive or have a ride, we can get you. We got a church bus. Then we have Tuesday Bible Study. And that'll be fun, too. And then our regular programming for the week. <gasps> Biggest garage sale coming up. Me and John just went for another donation trip from Crumkeys. They have been donating, and it is quality stuff, Wonderful. like designer stuff too. Yes. Really nice. It's our fundraiser for the teen camp Yes, to send kids and workers to camp. Yeah, yeah, we're sending them all to camp. We want to send them all free. Camp. So, yeah, uh, that is March. No, May. May. 16, 17, and 18. That's, That's it. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> May 16, 17, 18. And we are accepting donations from you starting May 12th. Yes. So if you have donations, you Sunday, can May 12th. contact us for more info. Yes. All the fun stuff. Awesome. That is the rundown. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Connie family. Koozie. Hey, Hey, Gina. Gina. Miss you guys. Love you, love you. Yes. Fun stuff. Let's open to Romans chapter 10. Father God, we give this time to you. We thank you, Lord, yes, Lord, for opening your words to us. We thank you, Lord, that your word brings life. Praise we thank God. you that acting on your word unlocks the promises that are within. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we expect to see results from yes, it. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 6. So in Romans 10, 6, it's talking about the righteousness, which is a faith. Now, one of the main points I want to give tonight is this is the answer. Woohoo! This is the answer. Somebody yeah. says, the answer to what? Whatever problem we're facing, mm -hmm. this is the answer. If you've got a question, if you've got an issue that you're up against, this is the answer. And it says here, first of all, in dealing with the answer, sometimes you need to find out what you've been saying that has not been producing results. <laughs> so here it says, the righteousness, which is the faith, speaks... Hmm. On this wise. Did you know the righteousness which is of faith speaks? Wow. And this is what it says. First it says what not to say. And this what uh, it's telling us not to say is dealing with what's in the natural. Mm -hmm. I've got to go get someone to pray for me. Now we believe thoroughly in the supernatural. <laughs> We believe in praying. Oh, I hear myself preaching. Right. <laughs> we believe in praying for the sick. We believe in the spectacular. We believe in the supernatural. Yes. Things happening, happening spectacularly. Yeah. But we push the mundane word of God because we know in the long term, if you learn how to fish, That's right. you'll be able to eat for a lifetime. Yep. And if you learn how to take the word and speak it, and stand on it until you see the results mm -hmm. happen in your life. You'll know how to get it, and you'll know how to share it. Awesome. Whereas when we pray, and we have to have this. This is the other side of the gospel. Is you have to pray for those who can't get it for themselves. And there are some that will never get it themselves. And so you pray for them for as long as God sees fit that they can um, you know, rely on others. But sooner or later, everyone will have to get this for themselves. Yeah. How to take the Word of God, how to speak it, <laughs> act on it, and unlock all the promises and the power that's within it. So it says, and it doesn't say, go get it here or go get it there. Go find Jesus to pray for you. Mm -hmm. But what does it say in verse 8? What does the righteousness which is a faith speak? The Word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. I heard it preached that there's another translation that says, look for your answer a little nearer by. Mm 
Mm. Look for your answer a little nearby. Now, this doesn't work if you've already got your answer in the world. Or if you already have it figured out that you're going to get your answer away from God. Now, if you have symptoms, if you've got problems, if you have alarming things, go get help. <laughs> Stay afloat until you can get the word working yeah. inside of you. But use your faith, whichever whichever way you're doing it. Include God, include Him. Put one ear to God and just say, God, what would you have me do in this situation? Even if you're going into the doctor, say, God, what what do, what should my words be in this situation? And it might just be, you know, everything's going to work out for God's glory. It's all going to turn out okay. It's going to turn out right. God's going to get glory out of this. Hmm. You start using your words. So, the word is near you, in your mouth. And in your heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. Now, this word of faith, can it's, it's been used in the world as a derogatory or as a, you know, they found fault with it. And they even have, they've even made things that attack the word of faith movement. And uh, um, they make it. There's a website called X Word of Faithers. And I heard somebody preach, and he said, my name got on there. And I, I saw some of the other people on there. I said, and he goes, wow, I'm in with some really good people here. This is awesome. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't work for the world because the world, they're not, it's not in their heart. No. And in their mouth. Right. But once you receive Jesus, he's in your mouth and in your heart. Yeah. That's right. And the word works because Jesus works. That's right. Jesus and the word are one. It says, oh, hold your place here. Let's just look at it quick in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. You know, when you preach the word of faith, you're preaching Jesus of faith. That's right. Because it says in John 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now look down at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hmm. The word was made flesh. You know, when God speaks, it always becomes. Mm -hmm. It always. It said that God's word, it, it cannot return void. It says that in, in Isaiah. My words will not return void. When God speaks, it never comes up empty. When God speaks, it never becomes a dead end. When God's word goes forth, it never produces nothing. It always produces. And the word that God spoke became Jesus. God spoke it. In the beginning, God created. He said, light be. He didn't say, it's not dark. He didn't say, you know, man, this is a mess. He said what he wanted to, ha to happen. And his words produced. Mm -hmm. And it says here, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now look at Romans chapter 4. You know, these are fundamental things. This may be review, but if it's of any value, you need to go back and make sure you're on track. Yeah, yeah. We need to review this. Yes. And in Romans 4, verse 13, it says, For the promise, talking about Abraham, talking about him having children, that miracle of having children at a hundred. <laughs> For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. We just saw that the righteousness of faith speaks. Talks, it speaks. Yeah. It's in your heart and you, it's in your mouth. Yeah. The word of faith which we preach. Jesus is that word. For the promise, it, uh, but through the righteousness of faith, verse 14. For if they which are of the law of heirs, and faith is made void, and the promise made in none effect, because the law works wrath, we'll, for all, let's jump down to verse 16. Therefore it is a faith, that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is mm. the father of us all. So God birthed this whole, he birthed this faith proposition in a fuller form through Abraham. To the point where it calls him the father of faith for those who believe. Even to the point where it says uh, in Galatians 3, if you be Christ, then are you heirs of Abraham. Heirs, and according to the promise. Which brings us into this blessing of Abraham. Uh, Shana says what first? Oh, you put it on. Good job. Uh -huh. <laughs> Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. 
not to that only which is of the law, but also to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Calls those things. That's where the power is mm -hmm. in this whole faith proposition that God set up. Somebody says, why does it work that way? I don't know why it works that way. I just know that it works. <laughs> I don't have to know all the ins and outs. I just got to know my part. Yeah. And the Bible says that God calls those things which be not as though they were. That's what he did at the beginning in creation. He called for light when there was no light. Mm -hmm. He called for a savior to be born and some over, what is it, three or five hundred years later, Jesus was born. Right on the moment that God intended. If God calls those things which be not as though they were, and it says that God, through Abraham, brought this promise, and it is the word of faith which we preach, there has to be a connection. The connection is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, We having the same spirit yes. of faith. That's the same spirit of faith that God created the earth. Wow. That's the same spirit of faith that it says God calls those things which be not as though they were. And it says that we have that same spirit of faith. Mm -hmm. It makes it so easy. It's like when you're transferring over files with the same type of device. Yeah. It makes it so easy. Well, it's the same power source. Yeah. yeah. It's the same power source. It's so easy. We it. having. It doesn't even say once you receive Jesus, you're right in there. Yeah. You've got it already. But we've got to find out how to use it. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So let's say this. We said in Romans 10 that the word is now you in your mouth, mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. The word of God was spoken and then it was written. But the word was written so it could be spoken. That's good. So God spoke it, and men wrote it. Somebody says, well, God didn't write it. Well, he did. He had man write it. And it still calls it, in the New Testament, it still calls it God breathed, even though he had to use people to write it. But then it, it was written so that we could speak it. Yeah. The word of faith which we preach. God calls those things which be not as though they were. Yeah. So it was spoken so it could be written, written so it could be spoken. And God calls those things which be not as though they were. He doesn't call those things that are as though they're not. we got to get this straight because if it's the same spirit of faith, we got to do it the same way God does it. He calls those things that be not as though they were. Now bring it back to creation. God didn't say, it's not dark, it's not dark, it's not dark. God didn't act like it wasn't dark and try to prove that. <laughs> no, he wanted light so he said, light be. So you and I need to do like God. Mm -hmm. Because we have the same spirit of faith. And if the, if the spirit of faith, I believe and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. You know the word of God is voice activated? Glory to God. It has to be spoken. Yeah. It has yeah. to be spoken. And so we as believers need to know how to unlock this thing to get it working. Hmm. So let me say this. I'm not acting like I'm not sick. No, I'm acting like the word is true that says himself yes. took my infirmities yes. and bore my sicknesses. No, yeah. I'm just going to be straight with you. Yeah. I was dealing with some symptoms today. <laughs> okay? But guess what? Somebody says, how can you say that? You're not in faith. No. Jesus, when they press, pressured him... He said, Lazarus is dead, hmm. but he followed by, by saying, I go to raise him up. Nice. So, so what if there's symptoms? Yeah. So what if I blow my nose? So what right. if I cough? Yeah. <laughs> but I have to follow it with, thank God I'm healed. Yeah. So what if I put glasses on? I put them yeah. on and say, thank God that right. I'm healed. It doesn't change the truth. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's what we stand on. Yep. That's what we put our faith in. That's what we believe. What would you that's say right. Sunday? You put the truth on top of the fact. That's right. Yes, you apply. So you apply the truth. Yeah. 
I yep. heard somebody say, um, who cares if you have symptoms? Those symptoms are nobody's business. They're not even the devil's business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, your focus is totally, it's not a question of how do you feel? Yeah. You know, yeah. What are you focusing on? Yeah, yeah. and believers have gotten so embarrassed about their symptoms. Yeah. Yep. The focus is on the wrong thing. Right. Our eyes need to go back on the word. So I brought an object lesson. Ooh, I like Ooh. it. This is an owner's manual for a Kawasaki engine. Oh. And all three of my mowers have the same engine in them. Oh. So I've got one manual and it runs them all. Wow. Huh. So I go in my manual. That's the start of the season. I get them out of storage. And I put new spark plugs. So I see the tune-up specs, uh, specs here. And I look at the spark plug, and it says spark plug gap, 0.75 millimeters. Mm -hmm. now, I, I could have brought this. I've got it on my floor in my room. It's good organizational skills. I know exactly where it is. Hey. <laughs> so I put, it's a gapper, and it's round, and it has different thickness of the metal going around the outside rim. Nice. And I stick that in that spark plug until I, it, it'll tell me how much of a gap is on that spark plug. And so what I need to do is go here, and I need to apply... The right gap to that, that spark plug. That is very specific. Mm. That's very specific. Why? Wow. Because it's going to have long-term effects on that engine. Wow. That engine runs best when that spark plug is at 0.75 millimeters. Wow. So I want to make sure that I'm to spec. Because this good. is law. That's good. And somebody can say, well, you know, I just do it like this. I just, you know, I just eye it. Or I just, you know. No, 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 no. I want to make sure. Yeah. I've got this in line. Now. I go out to my mower and I left this on the table and I go out there and I get my spark plug and I go, okay, hmm. I think it said 0.75. So what do I do? I come back in the house, <laughs> I page through, I didn't save them spot, so I got to page through, okay, okay, it says that. Now I sit here, okay, 0.75 millimeters. Now I should just bring this out with me, <laughs> but what I do is I bring it out there and I see, okay, spark plug here, okay, we're good, we're good. And keep going. That's settled. <laughs> you see, the only yeah. value in having this manual is that I act on it. Yeah. Yes. I can read this like a book and I can tell everybody, everybody, 0.75 millimeters. Oh. Woo! But if I don't do anything, it's worthless. Yeah. Wow. It's worthless. Yeah. That's I funny. can even say it. And that's good. I need to say it because faith comes by hearing. And I say it until I see myself doing it. Yeah. And you have to be so convinced that that's the right one that if somebody else comes up to yeah. you, it could be a mechanic and says, well, you know, out of my experience, yeah. when I tried one of those, it would always break. Yeah. And it's a different motor, different spark plug, different everything. But yeah. he comes along and he goes, but I'm a mechanic. Yeah. And I have experience. So then if you would believe him and put the wrong thing in there, you could break your whole engine right. just going off of somebody else's instead of going back yep. to what the word says. Yeah. yeah, and if somebody brings that snide remark, I may go, oh, was it 0.75 yeah. yeah. I'm already in trouble. I'm not established. Yeah. This is the point of that. Action is the only value. When I go to 1 Peter 2.24, yeah. because when symptoms come... You need to answer those symptoms That's with right. truth. Right. You answer those symptoms with truth. Yep. You know, when I take the word of God and I respond by agreeing with it and acting on it. Remember, I'm not acting like I'm not sick. I'm acting like the word says. Mm -hmm. What does the word say? First Peter two twenty four, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. Well, how do you live unto righteousness? You speak. Yeah. Ooh, That's right. Yeah. yeah. But what this is talking about is when Jesus was scourged. Right. That was, it was considered payment in the eyes of God. It was payment. Yeah. For all sickness. Yeah. For all time. Mm -hmm. As a lamb, lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. So I look at that and I go, okay, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. And I go outside and I go, how do I act? Go back. Go back. You stay there until you know how to act. Yeah. I mm -hmm. act like it's true. Yeah. That action is called faith. That's good. And it says in 1 John 5, 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. faith. You see, you can take the word, you can say it, and you can act on it, yeah. and results are forthcoming. Yes. That's when mountains begin to move. Yeah. That's when the word works is when you apply it practically to your life. Yeah.
by whose stripes. I begin to act on that. Symptoms come. What do I do? Go back to the manual. By whose stripes you were healed. That doesn't matter. The symptoms don't matter. I'm healed. Yeah. So I begin to say that. You know what else? How you act on that? You praise God. Thank God. Thank yes. God this is true. Thank God this yes. is mine. Jesus, I take this as mine. This healing is mine. That's good. You did it for me. Yeah. And I receive it as mine. Thank God I'm healed. I agree with your word, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And I just act like it's true. And I thank you, Lord. That's good. Glory to God. I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. What am I doing? I'm acting like the word's true. Wow. So the next point is, you have to refer back. If I read this one time, then I throw it out. I don't need it anymore. Okay. I've got it. I've read oh, that boy. before. I've read that before. Well, are you doing it? I don't know. You know, I just, you know, I, I think I, you know, I, I think I'm good. No, I refer to it every time I need it. Yeah. And I refer to it often. And I read through it. And, you know, there's some sections I don't read very often. But there's a few sections that I read often. Because I need to do exactly what it says. It's so easy. There's so many details. It's easy to kind of drift away and kind of do it. You know, I eyeball it. I have some person say, ah, you know, you know, it works in my, my vehicle. No, this is this is my mower. Mm -hmm. It's different than that. Mm -hmm. So you have to refer back. That's good. Mm -hmm. But once I know what it says, I can act on it. Yeah. Reading it once isn't good enough. No. Portions of it need to be reviewed often. Yes. Yep. And, you know, somebody says, how long... Do I have to meditate on it until it's easy to act on it? Yeah. That's good. Until it's easy to do it. Yes. I'll go on YouTube and I have a certain, you know, if it's the first time I've ever done a certain maintenance thing or a certain replace a certain part, I'll go on YouTube and I watch. You know, I was just looking at something with the deck, you know, that has to deal with, you know, the deck and how it, it handles things. And I watched one video. And I see, okay, that's how that works. And I watched another video. Then I watched the, the people that make them and what they say to do. Yeah. Then I watched people that have a big business. They run these all the time, what they do. Yeah. So I need to know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Then I see on here, it's got little numbers. You know, you put it this high for that and you put it this high. And, you know, I'm gathering information because I'm not ready to act on that yet. Mm. I can't just jump out there ahead of time mm -hmm. and start acting like it until I know what it says yeah and sometimes you know you you read about other people what they did with the word and how they acted like it was true you know peter and and, and john they went to the gate called beautiful and and they saw that man who was uh never could walk his whole life and they said silver and gold have i none but such as i have give i thee in the name of jesus rise and walk mm -hmm. and they lifted him up and he received strength and he began leaping, jumping and leaping and praising God. Yeah. They acted like the name of Jesus was. Yeah. They acted on that word. That's good. And that's the simple steps to success. You yeah. get the understanding and the knowledge of, okay, what is this? And a lot of people, they just want to act off of that yet. That's not the time to act yet. There's so many steps before that action part. Yeah. Then there's the wisdom. Wisdom is, okay, now I get... The steps yeah. from this to the goal yeah. to then act on that. Then comes the action, yeah. which brings the success. But you can yeah. overcomplicate it. You know, and I usually overcomplicate it. <laughs> Where it's actually just so simple. You just stay there until it makes sense yeah. in your heart. Yeah. You know that you see yourself with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thinking about, and I thought, Lord, how does this tie in? I was thinking about, we have gotten games before, and we're going to learn how to play them. And the instructions, you know, we thought, okay, we're going to YouTube it and let's hear how other people play it. that first time. It's so tricky. Yeah. That first time. Yes. And and so we'll watch one person will be like, what are they even talking about? <laughs> they speak in English? Yeah. Are yeah. they speaking? Yeah. So then we'll, we'll go to a different one that's playing that game. And then they're, oh, they're so slow. <laughs> and it's like, what are we doing? Get to the point. Yeah. And then we'll find another one. And then they, they'll tell us. Well, I see this spiritually. Oh. So many people, they'll go to people or they'll go to the prophet. They'll go to the evangelist. They'll go to the teacher on the, they'll go to the, and they've got all of these people and they never look for themselves. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They never look for themselves because what they think is, oh, this is, you know what a lot of people say? I, I see this online a lot when they go out in the street and ask them about the word and stuff and they get 
take surveys and stuff, and they'll say, well, you know, we don't really know if this is true. This was written by man. And it was their opinion. It was many men. Yeah. You know how much business I have because people won't spend time for themselves? I, I got customers, they buy them over, they fully intend. I'm like, great, you're going to save yourself, you're well able, you know, go ahead and do it. And they can't do the maintenance. Why? Yeah. Usually it's because it's lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They won't get into it for themselves. They won't get into the manual for themselves. Right. And that's why they constantly need help from somebody else. Yeah. And that is the picture of a lot of the body of Christ. Yes. Now, I'm not saying us, you're not, I'm not saying the people watching, it might be you, might not be you, but there's always areas that we have not been studious enough to find out what God said. Yeah. I'm not acting like I'm going to run. You know, people drive their vehicle like it's the last one, and if it wears out, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> you ever do that? You're listening. Oh, man. Yeah. This is the one that's going to do me, and that's the sound. Oh, I hear that when I start it up. That's getting worse. Oh, man, what am I going to do? How am I going to get another one? Go back to the manual. Yeah. My God shall supply all of your needs. Yes. According to his riches and glory right. by Christ Jesus. You just act like, you, you know, Jesus always acted like a man who had something. Yeah. He never acted like a person that went, went without. He always acted like he had something, like he had enough. And he'd look at his disciples. You know, you feed them. Master, there's 5,000 men plus women and children. And we don't, you know, it take more than a year's wages. And we just got a few loaves. Of Jesus said, that's plenty. He acted like it was true. He acted like God was his provider. And that all was well. You know, usually when you buy a new thing that you have to put together, yeah. the company that gives you the instructions, they give you the tools, they'll usually give you a couple extra. If a company would do that, how much more God? If he's going to give you, okay, yes. I want you to do this oh, thing, I'm going to give you all the tools you need to do with yeah. it. When that's Jesus good. said to them, you feed them. Yeah. He well knew that they could have done it. Yeah. He well knew. He had been teaching them about faith. They could have done it. They had the tools for it. But then they're like, it's too hard. I can't do it. Yeah. They didn't even look at the He's manual. He's right there with them. He's right there. Yeah. They got the guy who designed they got the, the manual. Right there. there. Yeah. The guy. Yeah. Oh, all they got to do is start to be like, help. They didn't even need a YouTube video. They yeah. got the guy right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's go back to Romans chapter 10 again. And let's make this practical. Yeah. It even says that in the Bible that he equips us. He gives us everything yeah, we would ever exactly. need to do yeah. anything he ever calls us to do. Yeah. Where's that scripture that says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Yeah, we just read that in, uh, we're, we were there. Same second, faith. Was it the second oh, Corinthians? That's first, that's first John. Were we at? Did we yeah, first second, second 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 Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Where, where did we go? Was oh, it? that was Second Corinthians. We did just read that. Was it? I believe, four, therefore have I spoken. 13, we also believe and therefore speak. 413, Second yep. Corinthians. My mistake. Okay, so yeah. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So, mm -hmm. having faith in God, believing God is more than just believing. That believing has to result in the action of at least speaking, but also including acting. That's good. Yep. Yeah. When people say they believe in God for their healing, but they're acting like they're sick, it's, it's not going to produce because they have a dual harvest. They have a dual planting. They're, they're acting on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a really silly example, but... So, we'll bring it in. We've been talking about spark plugs and mowers. Let's bring it into hair products now. <laughs> so, Yay. there are so many good, like, hair tutorials out there. And if you watch, the biggest thing that I realized was, I thought you just get the products, your, your the hair products, and poof, you're good. But hair products versus the hair techniques, that you how you use it, is, like, equal. And so you can't just go out and get your Bible and you have to do the techniques. You have to act on the word too. And they're equal. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to do it the way they say it. Exactly how they said exactly. about Abraham. Yeah, that's really good. That is well, really true. And that's also like you get the thing that you have to build. And if you just study the instruction manual... But you never get down there to do it thinking, well, I have to know exactly yeah. how each and every part comes together and I have to memorize this. 
No, you just follow along with the steps as it goes. Yeah, yeah. But you have to do it. And you can't jump to, well, I don't like yeah. this step, so I'm going to jump to step five. Yeah. But if you don't do the first steps, yeah. you're going to have all these pieces, and it's not going to fit together. I've done that, where I actually jumped ahead one step, and I put it together, and I'm like, oh, I have to take this whole part off oh. because I have to fit this in there first. I should have just followed the directions thinking <laughs> yeah. I knew better. Now, but, what yeah. would you think as, you know, because some of these things, I, I never, I didn't consider myself very mechanically minded. I still don't think, I don't tackle very deep things, but I was forced through what I do as, a, you know, working with mowers, it's a lot cheaper to change my own oil. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper to change my filters, change my, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, what would you guys think if year after year go by, and I still, every time something happens, I go, oh, I wonder if that's in the manual. Where is that in the manual? <coughs> you would think after some, somebody goes, and I see this. I just watched somebody on an interview. And some Christian guy, and he was so impressed that the person speaking knew where a Bible verse was. Uh. You know, it's not that you memorize the Bible, but I, I know exactly where my spark plugs are. It's in the specifications. You begin to become familiar with the word is what yeah. I'm getting at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you also become familiar with speaking the word. Mm. Now again, you know, it's not acting like I'm, I'm not my focus is not on hiding the symptoms. Right. My focus is not on, you know, trying to act like it's not there. Yeah. My focus is on the truth. Yes. In yeah. in Romans four, go back to Romans four. That is so that powerful. Is. It may it's so yes. simple that it's easy to miss. Yeah, easy to stumble over. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, if I'm dealing with symptoms. Uh oh, no, everybody, what's that over there? <laughs> 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 but if I'm standing on on healing, you better hear on my mouth. By Jesus stripes I'm healed. Right. I call my body well. Yes. I believe I receive my healing. It's mine. I have it now. God, thank you for it. Yeah. That needs to be in my mouth. And you don't spout that where people won't understand it, but you might. Mm. You might. So in Romans 4, let's keep going here. Let's see, the verse. The end of verse 17 says, God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Let me say it this way just to bring it out. Who, God who quickens the dead by calling those things which be not as though they were. Mm. Ooh. God quickens the dead. So God does that, and we have the same spirit of faith. You so know, what you I... think about God, Almighty yeah. Creator, that uh, he, he should be able to just boop. Yeah. It's done, you know. <laughs> he should be able to just point or just, you know, some people think have said it. he's at the throne room and he just moves his finger. You know, I think the Bible says he just moves his finger and then, yeah. you know, all this happens. He, yeah. he calls he wow. calls those things that aren't there. He calls it to us. That's him. right. He yeah. calls it in. But let me bring this thought up. God call, quickens the dead by calling those things which are being not as though they were. And we have the same spirit of faith. Yes. So how, if I've got a dead part of my life, how do I bring life? Well, you quicken the dead by calling those things which are being not as though they were. Yep. According to what God has said. Yeah. I call my... I call my body healed. I call my liver alive and functioning. I call my eyes. I call my vision 2020. I call my skin healed. I call my I call my stomach and my digestive system perfect, strong and peaceful. You, did you know that in the Bible, after he created everything, he saw it and that it was good. Yeah. That's healing right there. Yeah. You stand on that. Yeah. What what was lost through through the curse and through disobedience. Jesus got it all back, mm -hmm. and we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's Galatians 3.13. But you call yourself, I call this perfect, like God made it, mm -hmm. intended it for it to be. Yeah. I call my immune system strong. I call my body well. I call my body strong. I call my body full of energy and, and life in Jesus' name. I call my body quickened in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But then you got to act like it's true. Ooh. And that bed can be ah. your downfall. That acting, you see, it's not that I'm acting like I'm not sick, but I've got to act like I'm well. I've got to act like it's true. Yeah. And yeah. so many Christians, I've heard them where instead of speaking the things that they want, they just, they're still focused on the symptoms. Yeah. They'll go, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I don't have a runny nose. I'm not in pain. 
You're still focusing on the thing that's changing. Yeah. Our job is to just speak the end result. Yeah. The end result that God wants, the end result that belongs to us that I am healed. I am yeah. strong. So let's look at that right here. So God quits us dead, calls those things to be not as though they were. That's the same spirit of faith that's in him as in us. He put it in us. He gave us the measure of faith. Yeah. And let's look how Abraham applied it. So Abraham, against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. That just means it's a miracle. It could, he could not have that without God. It says, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Yeah. And Abraham, being not weak in faith, now here's a big key. Now, I don't act like it's not there, but I have to consider it's, that it's not bigger than what God said. He didn't consider his body. That means he wasn't focusing on the facts. That's right. If you focus on the problem, you'll drown. Yeah. You've got to focus. What did he do? He considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old. Neither yet the circumstances in Sarah. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being mm. fully persuaded. So let's look at So he considered not the sickness. Now look at Hebrews chapter 11. So he considered not. Abraham considered not... The symptoms. Okay, so I consider not. What do I consider? In Hebrews, actually it's chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily uh, beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Yes. So you don't consider the symptoms, no. and you do consider Jesus. Look at Matthew chapter... In, the, in verse 3 it says, For consider him yes. who, who endures such contradiction. That's right. Praise I mean, God. we've done this. So, I mean, I've woken up before, I didn't feel good or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, but a healed person goes to work, so I'm going to work. Did I feel better right then? No. Yeah. I got ready, got my makeup on, ate my breakfast, Getting my getting dressed to go. Do I feel any better? No, but I'm healed. I'm going to work now. Be led, okay? And so then I've had it happen so many times where I will get to work. I will be getting out of my car. Do I feel any better? No, but I believe I receive my healing. I walk into that store, and like within minutes, yeah, it like yeah, is gone. Why? Because that is following through, yeah, and yes. guess what? I didn't go up to everybody and tell them what was going on, no, and right. what had just happened, and what I've been going through. That's right. No, what if you would have? What if you would have thought? Now I've done this. <laughs> I've done this. I mean, it's been a while, but I've done this. Yeah, I get a day off work. <gasps> I heard Keith Moore say that if you use it for sympathy, for days off, for attention. Or whatever. If you use it, you'll never lose it. So, oh. so if Jesus, if, if God said in His Word that by Jesus stripes I'm healed, and I do that, I'm on a sync with God. I'm on a sync with the Word. The Word's not working on my behalf. You know, if you don't believe in it and if you don't act on it, you're not going to walk in it. If you're not willing to fight, you're not going to have what God has for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've what God, the second, what God has is not automatic. It will not happen automatically. You've got to get it. You've got to take it with faith. Yeah. I'd rather be at work and feel healed and walk in healing than get a day off and mm -hmm. feel awful. Yeah. Well, here's a couple things. When COVID happened, many Christians. Oh, we get to stay home. We're getting free money. We don't have to work. This is amazing. And there are Christians that are still yeah. doing that now to this day. Wow. Is that crazy? The other mm -hmm. thing is, if you don't walk by faith oh, that's in good. these daily, everyday things, yeah. when that big thing comes, you won't oh, be able to do it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You want, we are... What we're doing is we are using that faith muscle. Ooh, we are good. growing it. We're developing it. We're getting strong in it. How are you going to do that? It's using it. Yeah. It's you, and the big here's the big lie. Oh, I got to use my faith. I got to believe the word of God. Oh, now I got to stand in faith. And I got to, you know, get to rest wow. while I'm, I still have these symptoms. That's a lie because it says in Peter... 
that it is good to use your faith. Wow. It's better than anything yeah. to use your faith. They counted it all joy to use their faith. Because right. you'd be like, woo, God's going to yeah. get glory now. This is going to be amazing. Testimony yes. time. Yeah. But see how that mindset, yeah. we're so solidified in not using our faith. Yep. Well, and we give so much attention to it. Yeah. Where somebody, like if Kelly, if you would have gone into work, oh yeah, guys, I woke up this morning, man, just not running off my face, talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, but God is good. That's what what you put your attention on is going to be the biggest thing in your life. Yeah, so you're constantly yeah. talking about the symptoms, about <gasps> you're just glorifying the devil. Yeah. In uh, the Amplified in verse 2, it says, looking away from all that Whoa. will distract to Whoa. Jesus. Wow. It's in one motion. Yeah. So you're looking away yeah. from looking at Jesus. Wow. Because it's not Jesus and the symptom right here. They're on totally different opposite ends. You know, um, so I'm going to be 66 this year. And so many of my friends and my peers and people that we're with and stuff are my age or older. And, uh, and it's almost like sometimes when you're with varied people like that, Christians, spirit-filled Christians, when you bring up, I'm not getting, I'm not going to be old. I'm not, the Bible says I'm still going to bear fruit I'm still going to be fresh. I'm still yes. going to, you know, be strong. And you bring that up. It's like a war. It reminds me of Christians who get saved, but then there's this spirit-filled thing. Yeah. And that would just cause war. Or the tithe. Yeah. Yeah. That'll cause a war. So you don't even bring it up. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Whatever happened to the truth? No wonder God is having us get back to the truth. Yeah. That's right. Get back. And this is so important. Yes. Because obviously... We need to get more revelation on this yeah. so that we put this in our life. It's the simple truths. It's the simple that truths. That make you a success Yeah. when it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to the things of God. It's the simple truths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason that Christians aren't making it or they're not having a good time following <laughs> God is because they're not activating the simple things. Oh. There are easy things that if you'll just do them consistently. Yeah. You know, I get in the Word. Yeah. I find out what God says about me. And I act like it's true. Mm -hmm. People don't want to act like it's true because it means they have to do something. Yeah. You have to do something. Yeah. And it's so much better when you do it the way God... You see, God handed faith to people in the earth. To every Christian. It's given the measure of faith. He gave you something that pleases Him if you'll use it. He sets you up to be a blessing to Him. And there's it's impossible to be a blessing to God and not know it. Mm-hmm. If you're doing what God says and it makes it happen, you're going to know it. You're going to have results. And if you are claiming to walk by faith and live by faith, and it's not pleasing God, you're not getting results, and you're not getting the results that God says, then what you're calling faith and what God's calling faith are two different things. Mm -hmm. We need to find out what God says about it, about it and do it the way He says it. And here's an example. Uh... If you want to look at it, it's in, in Matthew 14 where Peter and the disciples were in the middle of the night and Jesus comes walking on the sea and they were afraid. And verse 27, Jesus spoke and said to them, Be of good cheer, it's I, don't be afraid. And Peter answering him and said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come on the water. And he said, come. And Peter was come out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying lord save me and immediately jesus put his hand out and grabbed him and then he said this you little faith why did you doubt so we always look at that when peter looked at the wind and waves he sank but did you know that jesus looked at what jesus uh, peter looked at what jesus said and it gave him mm -hmm. faith not only did he step out on that word but he was emboldened to do you know, stepping out of the boat, that first step you think would be nuts, but when that focus on what Jesus said there you go. gave him faith and boldness, yeah. confidence for him to act on it. Yeah. But when he looked at the circumstances, fear came, he yielded, and he sank. Uh -huh. And that's a picture of our walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a picture of our walk. When I was seven years old and I woke up with severe pain in my hip and they took me to the hospital in, in, uh, 20 miles from us in Fergus, 
and the doctors, the specialists, after because it wasn't a bro a break a broken bone or something obvious, and it was some you know something I was born with that flared up at that age, and they told my mom put him in bed, he'll never walk again, and then she brought me home, put me on the couch, and my dad came home, and he opened the Bible to me, and he said like Jesus, be of good cheer, don't be afraid, but this is what my dad said. He opened where Jesus healed people. And he asked me if I believed it. And I'm a little kid, seven years old, never been taught not to believe. I said, yes. He said, what, what would you be doing if you were healed? He's getting me to act on that word. That action is called faith. Mm -hmm. There's no proof of faith until I act on it. Mm -hmm. There's no proof of faith or believing God until it enables you to do something. Because if... If, huh, if you know, your faith is not going to move mountains until it moves you. Whoa. If your you faith, guys say that whoa. again. If your faith doesn't move you, it's not going to move your mountain. Whoa. If you can read that and say that you have faith in it and sit there and not change. Whoa. I question that that's genuine faith. What if we took you home, we put you on the couch, and and you said something like, what about Jesus? What about, you know, and we'd be like, no, 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 no. The doctor said That's right. you won't walk again. So we start going online, picking out a wheelchair, picking oh out, gosh. you know, all the stuff. And, and what if we planned all that? We never, and here's the other thing. When I was at the hospital with John and he was going through all this testing and each doctor, and we kind of went up the ladder, specialist, specialist, specialist that was there. I all of a sudden started seeing John face on the, the cans where you put the money in, wheelchair. And I knew I needed reinforcement. Wow. I knew that because my mom yeah. heart was taking over my spirit. Yeah. And so I called Tom, and when he came in there, he was just like, uh-uh. Nope, nope. And that got me back on. That's straight. Mm -hmm. That's the church. Yes. That's the yes. church yes. family. Yes. And so, <laughs> so then when Tom came in, so when we put him on the couch there then, uh, Tom immediately got out his Bible. What if he wouldn't have done that? Oh, my gosh. What if it, it would have been harder later? Yeah. It would have been harder later. Yeah. yeah. yeah you and don't even know what hip it is now. I don't even remember. Well, well anyways, the story goes that he... Show me the word. He said, what would you be doing if you were here? I said, I'd be playing with my toys. He said, go ahead. Wow. So in the midst of that fact, my dad was applying the truth on top of that. Yes, path. yes. Because when I look at the truth, I'm emboldened to move. Yeah. Wow. When you look at the truth of what God says, you will move past the hindrances of fear in the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll say it again. If your faith doesn't move you, it won't move your mountain. Wow. So that faith moved me. I got off the couch. I began to play with my toys. And I limped for a while. And I remember there was something at a church we were going to at that time. And I couldn't, I couldn't, it was an outdoor activity. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't run the kite to get in the air. I remember that. I remember really? that. But I was on my feet. See? And within three months time. Now, could it have been faster? Yes. But why wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe I didn't grab hold of it. You know, sometimes healing is gradual because faith is gradual. Wow. But you know what's, what uh, we never did? Thank God. We never gave place to it. Yeah. No. We never treated him like he had that. Yeah. We never said, oh, are you okay? Oh, why don't you wait here? Do you want us to carry you over there? Uh, we'll go get it for you. Yeah. We never did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or wow. constantly asking him, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Yeah. They're even, even in the natural now, they're talking about, you want to know why we have so many mental health problems? It's because we're constantly focused on emotions and your, how you feel and all that stuff all the time. They said the best thing for mental health and depression and that kind of stuff, go run errands. Why? It gets your mind off of it. Wow. Stop thinking about your feelings yeah. Yeah. and do something else. How much more? Looking away from that and looking at Jesus. God, how can I serve you? What do you want me to do? Yes. Instead of, how am I feeling today? They even say that therapy now is hurting people because they're constantly just talking about their problems yeah. all the time. They even have a word for it. It's called, um, Rubiation? No, uh, something like that, where you're just ruminating. And it literally. 
sparks up and it refloods all that pain of what that person or that situation did to you and it just keeps it going over and over and over wow. instead of actually healing it. Yeah. It's kind of like a scab yeah. and you're constantly opening it, constantly opening it. Just wow. put a band-aid on it. You know and what those band-aids John, are? You never told anybody. You never told I never heard you tell grandpa and grandma or your people friends or yeah, people at church. This you is never my did. condition. This is yeah. my condition. Feel sorry for so let's look at Jesus. Let's look at Jesus on how to move a mountain. And let's look at this with fresh eyes and expectancy. Where are we going? Because you Mark eleven and verse twenty three. Now, we're referring back to this because we need to get this. Yeah. This is what Jesus taught. This is his seminar on faith. Yes. And we know the righteousness, which is a faith, speaks. We know that we believe. I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Mm -hmm. We know we don't look at the symptoms. We look at Jesus. Yeah. What were you going to say? Just think about if you would have used that situation to get, oh, well, because of my hip, I should get an extra ice cream. Or because of this... Yeah. You should clean my room for me. If yeah. you would have did that, started using it to manipulate and get things. Entitlement, mentality, wow. and faith do not mix. No. Mm -hmm. That would have been yeah. your God instead of God as your yeah. source. Wow. Oh, so wow. many people do that. So that Jesus, would have been idolatry. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 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 So wow. Jesus, how do you move a mountain? In verse 22, he starts out, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Yeah. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So let me say it like this. Whosoever shall say, not doubt in his heart, but believe his words shall come to pass. He will. Okay. Bell's word yes. will come to pass. Mm -hmm. This is what God does. Yeah. God speaks to things and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass. This is the, this is the spirit of faith. Yeah. So, and the other side of this, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So, when you have symptoms in your body, what do you do? You feel sorry for yourself and you lay down on the couch. Now, I'm not trying to condemn people for doing this. We all start where we are. We've all already done what we've already done, and there's no reason to try to have condemnation over it, but we can see this and say, I'm going to do it this way from now on. Yeah. So if I've got a headache, what do I do? <laughs> headache, I command you to leave my body. Pain you leave in the name of Jesus. Then what do you do? Well, I want healing. I believe that I receive healing from my head. I, receive, I, re I believe I receive healing in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for it. Now what do you do? You act like it's true. You act like, you act like what Peter did on the water when he looked at Jesus. He acted like what Jesus said to come out there was true. You do what that woman with the issue of blood when she heard that Jesus had power and if she would just touch her. And she acted like it was true. You act like it's true. Mm -hmm. So if you've got problems in your finances, if I open my wallet and I've got a bill and let's say this is the bill, and I've got a bill and I don't have enough money to pay that bill. What do I do? Well, Jesus said to speak to the mountain. And he said in another place to speak to the sycamine tree. You know what? They make paper from They make it from trees. <laughs> <clears throat> so I lay that down on the table. And I say, bills, you be removed in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my needs met in Jesus' name. And you act like it's true. Somebody says, it's hard to call those things which be not as though they were. No, it's not. You no. just go back to the word and yeah. you see yourself in there. You'll begin doing this. Yes. Go back to step That's one. so good. Go back to step one. The righteousness, yep. which is the faith, speaks. God told a group of Israelites that were in, inundated with doubt and unbelief. He told their leader to get in the word day and night so that he would see and be able to act. Wow. Joshua one eight. Observe, then you'll make your way prosperous. You'll have good success. Why is the body of Christ as a whole not having success like they should? Because they're not in the word like they should be. Do you think it makes a difference? I'm, genu I'm genuinely asking this. Do you think it make us, makes a difference if you go through the scriptures 
on healing in the Bible. You know, he sent his word and healed me. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. He bore my sickness, you know. Um, and then never speak to. That's right. To the, your, the bill. To your, you know, immune system. To your whatever. Yeah. Do you think that makes a difference? Well, the Bible shows many ways to receive healing. Okay. You can so pray. So you need to be if you're, if you're prayed for and you receive healing, that person didn't speak to anything. That's true. Jesus sometimes touched a person, touched a person, didn't say anything. That's true. There's other times where he told them, go your way. Your faith has made them you hold. They had to act on it. Yeah. That's but there's true. sometimes, the Bible says in, in Psalms 107.20, this is Mar Mar uh, Marilyn Hickey's favorite scripture. He <laughs> sent his word and healed them. Yes. You know, you can get healed just by meditating on the word until you see yourself in it. Yeah. The word itself is the, is the cure. It says in Proverbs 4, my words are health, are medicine to all their flesh, yeah. to those that find it. The word is medicine. The word will heal you. But you could speak to your mountain. Yeah. yeah. You can command it. You can use the name of Jesus. The Bible says that in my name, they'll cast out devils. Yeah. In my name. Because sickness comes from Satan. Because in Acts 10, 38, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. We never see where God oppressed people. We always see where God sent Jesus and healed people. Yeah. But he had to use the word. He cast out spirits with his word. Yeah. It is written, Jesus said. But if he didn't know it was written, he couldn't say what's written. If you and I don't know what's written, we can't use that in combat against the devil. The Bible says in Ephesians to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Use that sword. Glory to God. The That's shield right. of faith. To, why? What is the shield of faith? It quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked. Those fiery darts are those, those snide remarks and those things. It's not working. Feel it. Mm -hmm. It's not working. You still feel sick. The shield of faith. Well, can, it, it'll put those out. Glory to God. So you good. need it all. You need to get in the Word. Use whatever means necessary. Get your healing from the Word of God. That's but good. when you're actually in faith and when you've taken hold, there's a peace. There's a peace knowing mm. that that spark plug is gapped right. I don't have to worry about that anymore. I've got peace because I know I've got, I've got it exactly how it was made to function. Yeah. When you connect with the Word... And you begin to say, when that peace comes and floods you from your inside, you know you've taken hold and that faith seed is planted. And it's only a matter of time. In fact, you can go around. I told somebody once, we had a man that we'd pick up for church. And I used to tell him, did, did you know I got my new truck? And he knew exactly what I was doing. He said, yeah. You know? And some other person would go, well, where is it? I said, I don't know, but I've got it. And I started acting like it was on the way. Yeah. I put my face. I started making room for that truck. Wow. I started buying accessories for that truck because it was on the way. Glory That's to God. Good. Start acting like it's working. Yeah. You believe you receive, and you start acting like God's gonna meet you. Because what you do is you stretch your faith as far as it'll go, and where your faith ends, the power of God meets you. Wow. Glory to God. That woman with the issue of blood, she went as far as she could on that word that she had. And when she got to the end of what she could act on, she met the power of God. Wow. That's a picture of us. So let's say this That's together. Good. Say this out loud. I see in the word. I see in the word. First Peter 2.24. First Peter 2.24. By whose stripes I'm healed. By whose stripes I am healed. That's written to me. That's written to me. That's mine. That's mine. And according to the word. And according to the word. If I was healed. I was healed. Then I am healed. Then I am healed. I also see in the word. I also see in the word. In Matthew eight seventeen. In Matthew eight seventeen. Himself took my infirmities. Himself took my infirmities. And bore my sicknesses. And bore my sicknesses. I agree with the word. I agree with the word. And if Jesus bore it for me. And if Jesus bore it for me. I don't have to have it. I don't have to have it. Body. Body, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. I'm using the authority. I'm using the authority. That's in the name of Jesus. That's in the name of Jesus. Body. Body. Now put your hand on your body. 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 I command you to be well. I command you to be well. I command you to be healed. I command you to be healed. I command you to be whole. I command you to be whole. Pain. Pain. Discomfort. Discomfort. Weakness. Weakness. Death. 
Death, you leave me. You leave me. Take your hands off. Take your hands off. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing. I believe I receive my it's healing. It's mine. I have it now. It's mine. I have it now. And Father God. And Father God. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. And because I believe it's true. And because I believe it's true. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Before I can even sense any difference. Before I can even sense any Put your hands up and thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So what do you do from here on out? You take the word and you find the scripture that applies to you. And every day you go to it and you say, thank God this is mine. That's good. Thank God it's mine. Yes. If you've got somebody who believes like this or someone you could tell it, you tell them, I've got my healing. Yeah. I've got the answer. That's, That's good. good. Why? Why do you have the answer? You know that saying, I feel like a million bucks? Never heard that saying, I feel like a yeah. million bucks? I'd rather have the million than feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd rather have the healing, the truth of the healing the foundation of the healing, then who cares about the feelings? Yeah. yeah. They'll come later. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Praise Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So good. Wow. So good. Praise God. <clears throat> we will be back on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. God bless Love you. Love you guys. Love you guys.